Hello and welcome to Startup TV and our show 60 Seconds where startups and inspirational projects have the chance to pitch the idea in 60 seconds. Um, we broadcasting every uh, week Friday 2 p.m. from Berlin Space Shack co-working and we're inviting startups projects to pitch the idea and you afterwards have the chance to vote for your favorite uh, idea and uh, the winner will be announced in the next show and then we cover them more in detail uh, in the next weeks. But now enough talking, first startup, it's Housey and uh, they are like a apartment hunting startup uh, and they believe to, to find a simple way to, to find a new apartment. And I've here uh, the manager, uh, Yusuf, and you tell me more. So your 60 seconds starts now. Well, as you just said, we make apartment, making and finding an apartment very easy. What we did is take the antiquated and commonly practiced method of letting and renting and turn it around. So it's no longer the tenant that's actually looking for an apartment. It's actually the landlord or letting agent that's looking for the right tenant. And all you have to do to get found is sign up to housey.de, create your free search profile, set your preferences, and move into your new home. You are automatically notified as soon as there's a new listing with your criteria. Uh, and you can yeah, communicate directly with the landlord through our web website. On, for, web, for landlords, on the other hand, it is extremely easy to find a tenant. We have the largest database of pre-verified and actively searching tenants in all of Germany currently, although we're only working in Berlin and the surroundings. So all in all, Housey is real estate made easy. So if you're looking for an apartment, go to housey.de, sign up, create your profile, and find your apartment. All right, perfect on time. So uh, if I get that right, um, when I'm searching for an apartment, I make a profile and then the, um, the landlord's like choosing what, what uh, uh, renter he wants to get in. Exactly. You create your search profile, you set your preferences. For example, you want a three bedroom apartment in Schöneberg, right where we are right now. And the uh, landlord or letting agent actually gets automated, well, uh, yeah, recommendations. And his listing is actually sent automatically to all fitting tenants. So they can then directly contact him and set a viewing appointment. So you make like these this this uh, apartment castings uh, and bring it to a bigger platform. Yeah, and we make it a lot more efficient because you don't actually have to go and look for people. Uh, neither the landlord nor the tenant actually has to go out and look through online or offline offers. They are automatically given to them through our matching algorithms, and therefore find an apartment very very easily. And but. Uh how is the process afterwards? So like the landlord is like choosing one and then they're doing the, like a visit or how does it work? Well, he sends his profile automatically of the offer that he's got to the matching people and our algorithm detects who fits to that apartment and who doesn't. As soon as they've set a viewing appointment, then the landlord has got like five to ten possible applicants, all of them that have the financial well, benefits uh, to be able to afford the apartment and then he can choose his perfect tenant. All right, so you're reducing the queues uh, in front of the empty apartments. Absolutely. Our whole goal and the reason why we do this is to get rid of mass viewings. You cannot be competing against 100 or 50 different people at a viewing and try have any hope of getting the apartment. It's just impossible. All right. Thanks for the pitch. So uh, if you're looking for an apartment and uh, don't want to stay in queues anymore, then try out Housey and let us know what you think about. And uh, if you want that we found out more and cover them more in detail, then give them a vote. And uh, yeah, then uh, it's up to you if we cover them. Uh, next one is uh, Merantix and they are creating a platform for uh, commercializing uh, AI into industries. And I hear the founder, uh, Rasmus. So let's hear more what they're doing. Hey, I'm Rasmus. I'm the co-founder of Mirantix. I mean, we all know AI will have huge impact on every single industry. Now, getting AI into those industries is actually much harder than many people think. And it's much harder than, say, putting in a simple app into the App Store. And we want to make that process easier. So Mirantix is a platform. It's an incubation platform which incubates AI startups from scratch to product market fit, which can easily take one to two years. And during this period, we basically help them to get market access. We bring the best AI researchers together. Um, we help them with regulatory topics, fundraising topics, and um, all our different AI companies are actually also using some shared technology. And that helps them all basically move faster. We have a healthcare company which helps radiologists to make less mistakes and be more efficient at their daily work. And so there we are, we are training algorithms on a ton of medical data which basically can, can support the radiologists. And so that's, it's, it's really saving lives. And then on the automotive side, for example, there we also have a startup which 
you know, an, building an autonomous car which somehow works is not that hard, but building one which is really robust and doesn't make any mistakes is really hard. And we're building a testing platform for autonomous cars. All right. Uh, so you mentioned already like like two industries, what's like automotive and healthcare. But how you are you focusing on just these two industries, or how does it work? So how is the uh, yeah? How does it work? Yeah, so we incubate relatively few companies, but for quite some time. So um, this year we will actually start one to two, maybe even three new companies, uh, which will be in different industries, which has the advantage that they will never compete with each other because they all sell to different different clients. Okay, and how you how you're selecting? So it's like the industry is coming to you and say, we need a solution for healthcare or for automotive, and then you're like building this 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 uh, company and this AI structure. Or is it the uh, vice versa? It's actually super flexible. So it could be that we see something in the latest AI research out there where we see, hey, this has a really interesting application in a certain industry. It could be that an entrepreneur in residence who comes on board building up this company comes with a great idea. It could also be that a large corporate comes and says, hey, we have a specific problem. Why can, can not somebody solve that? So it's, it's very flexible. All right. So, uh, but uh, like from the solutions, it's always like B two B solutions. It's always B two B. It's always what we like is the the hardest of all kinds. Mm -hmm. Basically, very complex technology, very high barriers to entry in these B two B industries, often even regulated industries. Because yeah, it's, it takes quite some time to get in there. Mm -hmm. But once you get in there, it's uh, you can build very valuable and successful companies, and that's that's what really excites us. All right. Cool. Thanks for the pitch. Thanks. So uh, if you're working in an industry and uh, think that AI, AI could help to, 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 to make it like uh, uh, better processes than Trimerantix, or if you have an AI idea uh, and uh, want to bring it into industries, then test them out. And yeah, of course, give them a vote if uh, we should cover them uh, more in detail. Now, the next uh, uh, is a nonprofit organization which helps by uh, especially uh, conflict management. I have the co-founder, uh, Helen, here, and let's find out more about that. Yeah, thank you. Resolute actually seeks to empower refugees to solve and prevent conflict in their communities. And we do this by delivering workshops in mental health literacy as well as conflict competency. So the ultimate goal would be for refugees to become mediators and solve conflict among their peers. And an important aspect of our work is that we create story sharing forums where refugees and Germans come together and talk about very sensitive issues such as um, racism, uh, stigma and mental health. And it is very important for us to address psychological trauma because um, affected individuals can understand that it can be treated on one hand and um, on the other hand, community members, um, you know, foster tolerance among each other, and that leads to further peace building. So uh, finally, yeah, Resolute actually manages conflicts in communities. All right. Um, and so how you're doing that exactly? So what is like, how is the format and how is like, and, and, and of what is the period of time you're, you're, you're doing that? Yeah, so we go into refugee shelters and provide workshops for individuals that are interested. Uh, and it starts with the story sharing where everybody gets to know each other and we talk about different reasons for conflict or issues that um, refugees have when they come to Germany. Um, and then later we uh, definitely go into conflict competency and mental health literacy as a second step. And then for interested individuals, they learn peer-to-peer -peer mediation and techniques of mediation um, so they can solve disputes in their communities themselves. Because usually what startups, what other people do, they go from the outside as mediators and they solve disputes from the outside. But we give refugees the skills to do it themselves. All right. And how is uh, the acceptance So how they are uh, using it? Uh, the acceptance is quite well. Actually, we had a number of successful stories. I mean, of course, it's always very difficult to measure impacts, uh, especially in the field of dialogue work. But uh, we had quite successful stories where refugees um, understood how to respond in a difficult situation in the job center or if somebody sits away from them in the bus and how to deal with that. And um, yeah, to, to address these issues is often overlooked in a polarized world like this uh, today. So it's very important to talk to each other um, about these problems. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Talking is a is a solution. Thanks for the pitch. And uh, if you want that we talk or film about uh, that project more in detail, then uh, please give them a vote. And uh, yeah, we will cover them uh, in the next week. The 
final uh, startup or project, what we're having today in the show is Esperanto Worldwide, and they have a social um, artistic initiative to focus uh, personal development, if I get that right. And yeah, let's find out more. Uh, your 60 seconds starts now. Hello, I'm Alisa, and I'm the CEO and founder of Esperanto Worldwide. And we offer companies an innovative solution for their social commitment with our social corporate um, package. And uh, this package in includes the planning, execution, and documentation of our in-house empowerment projects for young people in deprived areas. And um, for the creation of this uh, photo and video material, we use modern technologies such as 360 videos, augmented virtual reality, and companies can use it for their marketing and CSR activities. Um, we help companies achieving their business goals in growth, profitability, uh, customer um, loyalty and employee loyalty. And uh, our Esperanto projects have already been awarded several times and we have made a social impact on young people's life since already over five years. And we make an active contribution to the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Thank you. All right, big goals, definitely. As, uh, to, to understand it a bit more, so how is that works? So, or like, how is the process? How are like these initiatives and uh, what you're doing with the with the with the with the, uh, with the corporates and the, and the attendees? Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, this uh, the empowerment projects uh, are one month projects, and we go, for example, in South America, Africa, Asia. We do their projects in deprived areas with young people, um, and uh, at the end, uh, we do a photo video documentation or while the project also. And this uh, material can use companies for their corporate social responsibility or marketing activities. All right, and uh, how are the acceptance from the corporates? Are they like interested in uh, what they're like getting out of that or how does it, um, yeah, how's it achieved? Mm -hmm. um, we've already some interesting um, um, conversations about it and uh, they are really, um, um, yeah, um, they they see what we've already achieved and uh, also the the social impact we had mm -hmm. on the young people's life that we're already doing for five years and uh, this is really convincing for them and they want to say hey we we want to support this and or we want to be part of it and um, yes let's see what happens in the future. <laughs> and are you um, are you cover them or like be in contact then also with the with the with, with the young uh, children like afterwards or seeing how the how they are mm -hmm. like developing so something like it's like not just like one one month where they're like getting into a project and uh, so, so, so that's mm -hmm. like a more mm -hmm. long-term mm -hmm. uh, relationship yeah our goal is also to to do sustainable projects so um we teach them also to create their own choreographies to be independent one project for example in hanover already already is going on for four years, uh, trained by the young people themselves. So we are like an extern coach, always there if they need help. And if we are, if we are um, doing the projects in South America, Africa, Asia, and the future also, um, we cooperate with um, local artists and local youth institutions. And after this one month where we are there, they will continue the work um, locally and uh, keep the, the work going on. Cool. Great project, um, and uh, thanks for the pitch. Thank and you. if you want to hear more uh, about Esperanto Worldwide, then uh, give them a vote and we uh, cover them more in detail. That was already it for today's show, but of course we have a winner to announce. Uh, the win uh, winner of the last show is Super AI Banking Startup, and we will cover them in the next weeks and tell you more about them and how they're working. And now, don't... Uh, um, um, switch off and now we're showing you the uh, um, a more detailed interview or a show of our of one of the last attendees of the second or third show it's uh, cool bees and what they are doing let's check it out bye We think that books are, are something which is very hard to buy uh, from stars, from community stars. It's something very personal where you trust recommendation from your friend much more 
when it's relevant to you and uh, you want to read good books. Coolbees uh, helps influencers to improve uh, monetization of their links, recommendation links, uh, by giving extra benefits to the buyers. So buyers can choose, they can have price comparison, they can choose where they prefer to buy uh, the product, um, and that they also get bonus commission and percentage goes to charity. We start with first vertical books, um, but well. Currently, influencers uh, rarely have sufficient monetization from their recommendations. Very often, they do not include any affiliate links at all. And if they do, the conversion rates are usually quite low because mostly such links do not provide any benefits to the final buyer of the recommended product. If you have a book in mind which you like and you'd like to recommend it, you search it on our website and you have several options where you can buy it from several different platforms and you can create instant link. It's very easy, it takes five seconds and you can share it uh, via any convenient tool. You can send it in WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or by email or by SMS. And when your buyer um, gets the link, he can click and quickly buy it on Amazon, for example. If you would like to write a big review and publish it on social media, you can also do it. We got actually feedback that it would be nice to follow what your friends are reading or what other in some of this feature, although we do not have plans to become a social network.